there is an important limitation of the Bohr model. And it's probably wise that we discuss it now. And that is that it violates the certain principle, uncertainty principle. Consider this nucleus with an electron orbiting around the outside. The Bohr model has a prescribed radius for that or electron's orbit given by Rn is n squared a naught, where n is an integer. A naught is a constant. As a result, the uncertainty on R is zero. Furthermore, this electron is purely moving in a circular orbit. So while the azimuthal component of momentum is not zero, the radial component of momentum is zero. Otherwise, it would be waffling in and out of it in its rate of circular orbit. And this implies that the uncertainty principle, uh, the uncertainty in the radio component of momentum is zero. And this gives us that delta r times delta p sub r is zero. But we should have that this product is greater than h. Now, it's certainly understandable that Bohr would not have noticed this because the Bohr model preceded Heisenberg's principle, uncertainty principle by nearly a decade. And as a result, he would not have known this. But when the uncertainty principle came about, it was immediately clear that the Bohr model was not a complete description. And I will say that it also violates the uncertainty principle for delta T, del delta E. But that will become a homework problem for you. Now, I would like to point out that our textbook derivation of the Bohr model is somewhat historically inaccurate. Many textbooks will talk about a nucleus and a prescribed orbit for the electron and say that the Bohr model invokes the idea that I have to have a circumference, so 2 pi r, equal to a multiple of wavelengths for the electron. And this will then impose constraints on what are the allowed momenta and angular momenta for this electron. The only problem with that is that the Bohr model actually proceeds to Rowley's hypothesis. So while it's true that one can derive the energy levels of the, of the atom to agree with the Bohr model, using this quantization of radii to agree with an integer of, of a wavelength, kind of like a standing wave around the circuit, a circuit, a circumference. This is not how Bohr did it. Bohr's original model
was insightful for its own reasons. First, it was an attempt to make a model which agreed with data. And second, It was an attempt to invoke a correspondence of how the quantum mechanical should connect with the, with the classical regime and understand how these two things came to be this one and the same or part of one and the same picture of the world. That's where I think the Bohr model has its most lasting impact. In fact, it's this last concept of the correspondence principle.